an i7 with voltage issues, an RTX 3090 that simply won't work, and one of the best computers I think I've ever built. There's all that and more in this episode where I flip PCs to move out. With that being said, let's take a look at the new inventory we've gotten. First deal isn't actually going to be a full build, this is more going to be parts. Now this one has an X670 motherboard and it has an Antix C8 case. Now in total I ended up paying $180 for this combination and I did take the risk, I want to be honest because I didn't test out the motherboard so there is a chance that I will scan for this but hopefully though, you know, the build will be fine. Now this next build right here is actually pre-built. If you guys are fans of the channel, you guys know I love my pre-builds. Now this pre-built has a Ryzen 7 3700X, it has an RX 5700 XT, 16GB of RAM, and in total I ended up paying $300 for the complete set. Definitely has its issues though, you know, I think the AIO is bubbling really bad. So I don't like that. Worst case scenario, I'll swap it out, see what I can find, and see what else I change. So this deal right here is actually the best one. It is a complete computer, nothing is missing, no issues with it. Let's go over a rundown of the parts. It has an i7 13700K, it has a RX 6900XT, it has like 64 gigs of RAM, I'm not too sure. Might have to verify my information right there. But the thing that sticks out about this build is that it has a shit ton of storage. Now let me tell you guys, it has a 4TB SSD and a 2TB SSD. Now those 4TB SSDs alone cost for their fair chunk of change you know so i'm probably taking that out maybe keep it for myself you know i am a content creator after all i do need a lot of storage space but we'll see now another thing that i might also keep for myself is the 6900 xt now the reason i might keep this card is because i currently have a 3060 and i edit my videos on davinci resolve which is a free software that is really powerful but it also requires powerful components now my 3060 has been struggling i'm not gonna lie <laughs> especially with the animations and stuff. So I think this graphics card will be a huge help in that thing. And on top of that, it is always significantly harder to sell graphics cards with red on it and red accents because the colors you would like to sell are ideally black and white. Those are the colors that almost everybody likes to some degree. But in my case, I don't really care about the color. In my opinion, I think it looks amazing. I love the color red, it is my favorite color. So that would be a dub. Uh, it could go right very neatly into my build. I'll just have to double check the power consumption because that is one thing, I don't know. Power supply on my computer has like 750 watts. So. But yeah, this is a pre build that I got for $750. I think it was a really good deal and if I could just make it look really nice, I could make a decent chunk of change back from it. Now another thing I didn't mention is that this small CPU cooler is a stock cooler. Why would anybody put a stock cooler in an i7-13700K. It's obviously heating up really hot, or my guess would be that the person that built this for the musician tried to cheap out on everything, didn't know what they were really doing, or if they did know what they were doing, they probably turned down the, the power consumption on the CPU quite a bit, that way temperatures weren't heating up for the guy. But either way, it's a bad decision. That is where I come in, I'm gonna swap out the cooler, make it run a lot chillier than what it is right now, and see what we do from there. Another thing that the builder cheaped out on is a power supply, bro. Like, why would you put a 500 watt power supply in here, bro? Now, this is the last build we will be talking about. This one has an i5 12, 12400F along with a Z790 motherboard. So it's a pretty potent motherboard. It has a really good case. It has all the fans. So every it pretty much has everything except the GPU and the boot drive. So those are pretty easy things to get. I don't think I'm gonna change much to it. Besides maybe the cooler, I do not like that. That white is sticking out like a sore thumb, but I don't know, we'll see. So I ended up purchasing this build for 300. 300 is what, it, what I paid for the build. And if I could get like a $300 GPU, I think that would make a really good combo for this. Maybe preferably like an RTX 3080 if I can get it. And we'll make a pretty good profit, probably three to 400 around that range. So yeah, that's what I have. So now that we have talked about every build, I'm gonna personally go in and clean them out. I'm gonna put a quick time lapse of everything so you guys see a little bit of footage. And then after that, I'm gonna be going in and actually doing some actual work to the computer and posting them up for sale, hopefully make a profit and get closer to that $20,000 target. So here's me cleaning the first build, the second build, the third build, and finally the fourth build. However, you guys are not supposed to be seeing this computer right here or the next two because these next three were actually meant to be on another episode. However, one actually did spill into this one, which is the one I'm working on right here. Now, this Corsair 7000D wasn't actually planned for the episode, but rather I'm going to make a, a video for it alone because I think it's unique and it's not every day you stumble across a case as big, right? And you like, you know, 
You just don't. What a better way to start the episode than to actually go into a build I've been absolutely itching to finish because this has just been sitting on my closet for like probably like three months now. It's a build that I got for an insanely good deal and I'll put a little thumbnail and I made a video on it. But I eventually and finally got the 9070 XT and that is the plan right here. We're gonna install that one on here. I got a feeling it's gonna turn out really nice. So let's get to it. I really wanted to get this build done, bro, but this there's just something wrong with either the motherboard or the CPU at this point because I ran the OCCT on there, which is like a stress marking test. And it kept giving me error after error after error. And then I finally noticed that the CPU was running at 1.5 volts, which it shouldn't be. So I'm definitely gonna have to troubleshoot this PC soon and hopefully I don't find nothing crazy like the motherboard like I really want to have this done but yeah we'll just have to wait for the next video for the montage similar to the last one this was also a build that I needed to catch up on so let's get to it and here's the build I'm talking about now this one right here has a Ryzen 7 3700X and I'm planning to install this RTX 3060 this is a 12 gigabyte variant so it has more VRAM so it's a, I would say it's a pretty good match. I'm also installing the storage because it was sold to me without it. This is a terabyte, I believe. It's a, the brand is Vansony. It doesn't really say it in the front. And then as far as fans, I went with an all white fans. I didn't choose ARGB, no lighting or anything. I'm gonna just go straight white. Um, in general, lighting would be preferable, but I wanted to see how something without lighting but white would sell. So I'm gonna just experiment with it and hopefully it comes out nice. Now, the last thing, I'll cover is that I will be installing these cable extensions. Now these are from AliExpress. You can get these for like 14 bucks, depending on what version you get. But these already installed the cable combs. Besides that though, as far as actually within the computer as it is, I'm gonna swap this AIO, which is the radiator. Let me see if I can get a better. Goodness. Fucking shit. As you guys can see right here, the radiator right now is in the front. I don't really like that. I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm gonna move it up here and hopefully it'll look better. I also, this build originally had some white sticks of RAM, white RGB RAM sticks, which are the Corsair Vengeance or something like that. But the thing about those is that they're so thick that when you install the radiator up here, it kind of looks odd or sometimes doesn't even fit. So I got these G scales. So yeah, we'll be switching that out and installing everything bit by bit, and we'll see how it comes out. Now after doing that, of course I got to testing, and here's a quick snippet of the 3D Mark Time Spice score, which was actually really good. But yeah, test your hardware for sure. Now this next one I'm going to be working on is actually from the garage session and as far as changes I swapped the CPU cooler, I swapped the CPU to an i7, I swapped out the cable extensions and finally I took off the RTX 3060 for my build and used it for this one. And then I did something crazy, because this next pre vote I actually did the impossible here. I swapped out the cooler and the cable extensions, of course. Remember how I said that a couple of computers weren't supposed to make the cut? Well, this was one of the computers that wasn't supposed to, but it somehow made it in today's video. So this build has a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. It has a 1200 watt power supply, 64 gigabytes of RAM. So that should give you guys an idea of the quality of the actual computer itself. But uh, a couple questions comes up as soon as we talk about a computer with 1200 watts. What made it necessary to get a 1200 watt power supply for a 3090 Ti? Well, in the listing, he revealed all this information because he said he originally built the computer to, to use it on a large language model, which is some form of AI. With these LLMs, they basically use GPUs VRAM very intensely. That's why he needed two RTX 3090 Ti's to power it. And of course, in order to actually power these hungry cards, he needed a 1200 watt power supply. So with that being said, we now know the answer as to why the components in here were so crazy. 
But now we actually need to talk about the price because that is the only reason I have it here. So I tried to negotiate with the guy for a while and after about two weeks, he reached out. He sent me an offer and then I countered back at my original price, I believe was 1300 and he agreed with it. He didn't want to go through the hassle of partying it out and all that. So I ended up swooping by at his house, picking it up, testing it out. And 1300 I believe, is a pretty good price. So let's see what changes we made to it. Now, similar to my other builds, changes that I made to this build are purely for aesthetics. As you can see, I swapped the cooler, I swapped the cable extensions, and let's see how it turned out. Now, what do we have here? Say it with me now, a pre-built. Now this is a computer that you didn't see in the garage session because I purchased it afterwards. And then it was like the only computer that I had then. So I just decided to just clean it out. So what's the deal with this pre-built? What does it have? So it has a Ryzen 7 5700X and it has an RTX 3070. And in total, I paid $500. So in general, that would be a good deal. However, I did encounter some issues and wish I had checked temperatures before I purchased this because they were literally through the roof as soon as I tested it. Now I literally went through an entire loophole, like I literally swapped, I swapped fans within the liquid cooler and then I decided to swap the thermal paste on the liquid cooler. And then I just kept troubleshooting to see what it could be, to see if it's something with the CPU. And eventually I arrived at the CPU cooler was dead. And luckily for me, I had this exact same CPU cooler laying around. It was in similar pre-built, so I was lucky to have that. I installed it and then temperatures were looking great and of course testing went phenomenally so this is how it turned out honestly i completely forgot to record a video of the actual computer but at the very least here are some of the photos that i took for the post all right boys so right here we have a computer that very well might be my quote-unquote flagship or poster boy pc you know and i got to say the components won't be the most insane out of all the builds but i will say it will probably come out the nicest because i planned this pretty thoroughly and I chose my own parts. So if I, if it comes out the way I envisioned it, right, it's gonna be pretty nice. So now that we got all the fluff out of the way, you know, all that anticipation is now kind of going now. We now got to talk about the actual components, which it would be the 9600X and the RTX 3090. Now, I would say this is a pretty good combo because they're both not insanely cracked out specs, you know? And I think they pair pretty well together. But anyways, let's go over some of the other parts as well. So starting off with these fans. So these are the Asian horse Neout. Um, they're pretty good fans, but they're not daisy chainable, so it will be annoying to deal with all the cables, but I think they really look really nice, and for the price, it's pretty hard to compete as well. And this CPU cooler is also pretty good. It's from Thermalright, and it's one of, one of those LCD models, which will look really nice. Of course, not everything within the build will be brand new. We do have some used parts, like for example, this SSD is a 980 Pro, and this actually is used, but it is two terabytes, so that's always good to have. The case is also used, and the 3090 is also used. The power supply is also used. Speaking about the power supply, we have an RM850X from Corsair, and the case, we got a Lian Li Dynamic. Not the Evo, just a Dynamic. This is the OG case. We have the vertical mount for the case, which will make the 3090 just stand out even nicer. We got this B650 from Gigabyte, which uh, isn't too crazy, uh, not the best vrms for like cpus so you can't put like a 7900x on here because it will struggle a bit but it's uh i got it for a really good price and for the cpu i think you can't really go wrong with it all right some of the other things i can't forget is the thermorite contact frames this isn't really essential um honestly i don't know why i purchased it i probably needed to get like a like a certain amount on the aliexpress coupon thing so they kind of tell you oh spend like $50 and we'll give you $10, like $5 off or some, something like that. And I probably just got those to kind of add fluff into it. Let me see, oh, we got this, 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's Trinet Z. I paid around like $70 for this pack and I think I got it off Woot. So Woot is basically a company from Amazon, but they kind of like give parts at discounts and clearance. So if you get the app, just check it every once in a while for like computer parts. You could get some pretty good deals in my opinion. Now, Woot is one good app, but to be honest, the best thing you can get if you're buying like brand new components is uh, you could go to this Reddit called Build a PC Sales, I believe. And then basically other people post deals that they find online on there and they get a commission off that. But at the same time, because it's actually a community, they basically like check each other like 
let's say you put a bad deal, they're going to be like, oh, hey, like, oh, this is shit. You know, so it's kind of like it checks each other out. So somebody's getting paid, but at the same time, it also has to be a good deal for people to actually like make something off it, right? To make it worth their time. So that's how I found this bundle for the B650, the 9600X. The B650 motherboard came with the free 32 gigabytes of RAM and the CPU, the 9600X came with the free 500 gigabyte SSD. In total for that bundle alone, it was on Newegg. So I comboed it up. I paid like $370. This is a pretty good price in my opinion. But yeah, I recommend you get into that subreddit. That seems to be about it. Let's get to building. So you might be wondering, where did that GPU come from? Well, to put it simply, the RTX 3090 that I originally planned to use simply would not work with the riser cables that I purchased. At first it did while installing Windows, the BIOS, and drivers, however, after stressing the GPU, it would give me a black screen after a few seconds. And at this point, I was frustrated and wanted to just call it dead because in the last episode, I also spent a few hours troubleshooting the card just to find that it wasn't compatible with the specific motherboard. And because of this, I contacted the original owner with full intentions of getting something back. But before this, I asked him for his recommendations and was told to try a different riser cable because he vaguely remembered that they had issues with them. So I listened to his advice before I ordered a different riser. I tested it without the mounting bracket and surprisingly, it worked perfectly. So I ordered Cooler Master's riser to see if anything changed, but unfortunately didn't even get a post this time. So in order to keep that vertical mount, the only option was to swap the GPU, which ended up being an RX 6900 XT. This should have been an easy swap, however, I never wanted to use this card because it had a red LED on the frame, which made it stick out like a sore thumb. So I looked up whether this light could be disabled through software, but I quickly found that it simply wasn't possible. What was possible though was unplugging the actual LED from the GPU by disassembling it, and that is exactly what I ended up doing. I unplugged all the LEDs from the card, and it gave it that clean black theme I was going for. So even though the build didn't go as planned, I definitely cooked with this build and has to be one of the best PCs this 2025. With that being said, we gotta talk about the sales for this period. So unfortunately, I've only gotten one sale, which, which means I need to put more effort into my marketing and somehow find more customers. Of course, I know the market is a bit slower than usual, but either way, I know there's always something that I can improve. And the build that I sold was the white build I covered in today's video with the cost of $468. And it sold about a week ago for $800, leaving us with an all right profit of $332. With that being said, here's some bloopers for you guys and hope you guys are enjoying the summer so far. For. Have you guys seen those memes where they uncover a CPU cooler and the literal plastic for the CPU cooler is still there? Well, I'm gonna be honest here because I never thought this would happen to me, but. Yeah, it happened. It happened. Unexpected visitor here. Blood wants to build with me. Ain't that right, boy? That's it. Had a boy. <laughs> 